What's up, everybody? We have had some sleep, some much-needed sleep. E3 has come to an end. Well, sort of. The conferences will come to an end. E3 actually starts today. But <laughs> we're in London, where E3 is not. Um, so this, ladies and gentlemen, is our review, our breakdown, our post-mortem, whatever you want to call it, of E3 2016. We're going to go over a sort of brief version of everything that we saw. We're going to go over our predictions. We're going to go over our overall thoughts and we'll give it our review on our scale, which is a word out of ten. Huh. Do you remember when I pitched that to you a year ago and we thought that would be silly? Yeah. What's going to happen now? <laughs> let's yeah. do the silly thing. Let's do the silly. So, uh, let's go. Do you want to do predictions first or do you want to go chronologically first? I think we should go through the uh, the shows. The, the shows. Okay. I guess we can roll them into two. Whatever. Yeah. So, we started off uh, with EA, which was a really flat opener to yeah. uh, E3. EA, I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah. They revealed no single new thing, which already is a bad sign coming out of the gate at E3. Yeah. I mean, um, personally, I felt that it kind of set the tone for some of the, the rest of it, to be honest. Oh, really? Um, while there were some good things, I think EA kind of... It was a low point in yeah. this year. But I don't th- think I, we climbed too high from it. I do think EA was the lowest the lowest slump yeah maybe um, it set the tone for the rest of it and the, they didn't yeah. know how to order a, a first second and yeah. third <laughs> yeah, yeah. um the thing the really the thing that was interesting is last year at E3 the one thing that we kept saying about all the conferences was that they seemed to be in the wrong order like the yeah. big reveals were in weird places whereas with EA there was no order you could put this in that made it look interesting yeah. like they actually had a really good order down it was just there was nothing more to it yeah um it was all couple of couple of cool takeaways though. Titanfall looked great. Yeah, um, I think in fairness that was kind of the highlight. The first five minutes of their show was the highlight. Um, you will be very pleased to hear that Titanfall is playable offline in some form. Oh, excellent! Which means you'll actually let us. I mean, <laughs> it, it's not going to be on Linux, so that you won't get close to it. But, um, <laughs> you'll actually let us talk about it for Game of the Year with this year, which would be nice. Yes. Um, but yeah, it looked really good. It, it it played really well. The trailer looked fantastic, um, and it it look like more Titanfall which which makes a lot of sense um, I hope that that game gets more support and championing from the community because it it really deserved more than it got yeah, the first one I completely agree um, and I think a lot of people are warming to that now that it's now that we've sort of got past the, the Xbox One is shit years <laughs> I think people are actually going back and giving it a fair chance as, as is fair to do uh, Mass Effect looked really good as well um, yeah. what we briefly saw of it we didn't really see much though FIFA looked like it was doing an interesting thing, but it's FIFA, so yeah. for the people who love FIFA, th- that may be great or it may not be. I'm not one of those yeah, people, no, and I can't really it, speak to it. it. It's probably not really. Like um, FIFA, I think the core audience of FIFA are the same in the way that they just want the same thing. Yeah, so they want I, I, traditional I FIFA. Um, they want to just play football games. Well, and I mean that's like fine and to be expected because that's the kind of cadence that FIFA yeah. has set for many, many years now. Yeah, so it's it it's interesting. So I think the the idea of the story mode kind of appeals to me because um, although I'm not massively into that like games, I'm kind of interested in the idea of uh, it's like a go from being uh, Mr. Joe Schmuck to becoming I don't know someone in Chelsea or whatever. It's kind of a cool idea. Yeah. So uh, then we went from... Is that everything for EA? I think that's a fair wrap-up of EA. Um, <coughs> our predictions were... You said a Mass Effect blowout with yeah. a release a release date of January uh, next next yeah. year. Uh, there was Mass Effect information, yeah, so I don't know where to fall of. on that. Kind of. I mean, we got another teaser. That's yeah, the thing. and we did we did get more information, I guess. We got more gameplay and confirmation, so I think I think maybe we can give you that one. Okay. You okay with that? All right. So that's a point on the board. Uh, mine was that thirteen thirteen was going to be announced. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> far from it. Um, we 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 might have maybe had Battlefront two confirmed, but I don't even know about that. So uh, you you very much win EA. Okay. Uh, and then we went on to a few hours later. We had Bethesda. Now Bethesda came out the gate swinging. Uh, yeah. Rather than open with a. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bethesda's. They came out the gate with Quake, yeah, which was a thing that had been rumored for a while. People were kind of, um, we had thought we might see something in that vein, considering the success of Doom and 
Bethesda's real sort of um, sudden sudden jump to be at the forefront of gaming and to really have their name up there. Yeah. But for them to come out the gate swinging was a really good move of them, and I think it worked well. Yeah, I think so. I think um, as someone who's kind of into that uh, genre, I'm quite excited for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very interesting that it's like it's PC. It's 120 hertz with an unlocked frame yeah, rate. Yeah, they made it's a big like point of that. It's it looks like it's really going for an elitist crowd, not in like mm. a bad way, but like in a this is the ultimate kind of shooter yeah. way. Um, I think that's kind of a uh, a core audience thing, or like a the audience that they had then is probably going to be that crowd, you know? Yeah. So then uh, we got the Skyrim remaster. Yay. which uh, you say now but you didn't at the time <laughs> <laughs> um, we got the Skyrim remaster PlayStation 4, mod, Xbox One mod support, fancy upgraded graphics all the DLC, it's exactly what you expect from Skyrim remaster um, we saw this coming, Like they yeah. confirmed that they had remastered Skyrim to get a handle of the consoles yeah. Like that's how they tested development the first few years so it would be kind of stupid if they didn't put this out in some form Maybe maybe I there'll be no raining mammoths in this one. Oh, I hope so. I hope they've like remastered specifically uh-huh. the glitches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For me, I think um, while it is a g- good move, I guess, by them to add mod support and that, I think if they'd waited an extra, even just two years, they'd be looking at it be- being much better received. Because um, while the community does kind of want it, it's not but do you, top of the list. So. Can I, in that case, can I play devil's advocate and suggest in two years' time, if they come out and say Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, isn't that going to be sort of like teasing too much? Like you were expecting Elder Scrolls six oh, yeah. this year. No, that is true. And like that, if... is, that is fair. But I think that they're half trying to release this just kind of uh, on the quiet. I'm not really too sure because it it didn't seem like a massive push for them. Um, it didn't. I, that might be that might be partly because it was it was very heavily leaked before, so there yeah, wasn't much um, a that reveal of it. But yeah, I know what you mean. There wasn't the kind of on stage gameplay blowout that you expect. But Bethesda don't haven't done that much yeah, this year. True. So it's kind of hard to nail down whether it was a big blowout for yeah. them or not. Certainly, it was a big reveal. Yeah. Um, and then they kept swinging. Then they uh, showed off that Prey is in fact alive and well, uh, but it does in fact look nothing like that trailer. Yeah. Uh, it's very different. We got a very Bioshocky Dead Space vibe. Yeah, from it. I'm kind of half saddened by it because while it it looked kind of interesting and cool, it it didn't look like the trailer that they released before. And that yeah, the 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 trailer they looked recently released before looked like they were going for like a Mass Effecty. Assassin-y kind of Star vibe. Star Wars-y kind of vibe. Like a very much like a... I kind of pictured it as being sort of... Uh, I think Mass Effect kind of Deus Ex kind of... Yeah, Deus like Ex that. is a good shot. Um Whereas this looks like it's going for much more of a horror vibe. Like a like a Dead Space, as you say. Yeah. And I think I kind of wanted the other one. I would really like to see them release whatever they had built or just yeah. show us. Like, um, I don't know if you've ever seen their website, but if you ever have a chance, have a look at Unseen 64... Because the stuff that they unearth is incredible. They, I don't know how they do it, but they must have contacts in every developer that, and they're able to tease out the games that never happened. Yeah. Um, and some of the stuff they've revealed, like they revealed a first-person Marvel Avengers game for as a time for that movie. They've revealed two uh, Perfect Dark Rare games that never happened. They've revealed uh, Rayman 4, Banjo 3. There's really? all sorts of stuff. Um, and I would love to see Unseen 64 blow out what this game yeah. was at one point. Yeah. Because the trailer then and the trailer now are so drastically different yeah. that somebody, Arcane has taken over this game. But that means that in somewhere in Bethesda there is a corpse of what was. And it would be really interesting to see the evolution of what this game has become. Yeah, I, I would say it's interesting though that like um, maybe this plays... This new Prey uh, looks kind of more like the old one than what they released before. Yeah, yeah. So the old one was very much like a survival... Well, not survival, but it was a it was a horror game. It was a dead yeah, space. Yeah, And then the Prey 2 looked like it was a completely different genre. Mm. And then it looks like they've kind of gone back to what the original was. Yeah. Kind of. So were there any other big announcements from... I mean, there was uh, more Elder Scrolls Online content, which yeah. we expected. There was Fallout 4 VR... Which is big. Dubious. You say <laughs> yeah. dubious. I don't know. 
if the if that Sony stuff's to be believed, I yeah, true, fully believe they can do it, man. True. Um, um, what what um what VR was it expected to be released on? So they said Vive, but we don't know whether they said Vive because that was the platform that Todd Howard let yeah. out, or because it's exclusively on Vive. Right. Um, Vive is a really interesting one to launch on because. It feels like you can't use Vive to its full potential unless you're doing like a room simulator. Oh, okay. Like you can't use for you can't use the full potential of Vive because if you're walking, yeah. If you set Vive up in a room, you can only yeah, walk the Vive, distance of Vive that is... room, and that won't work for Fallout. So yeah, yeah. it seems it seems sorry it seems really interesting to come out and say, and we're launching on Vive. Yeah. But it's inevitably going to have to have controller support and be played with a controller. Yeah. Like. I don't know, maybe that makes a lot of sense for Fallout. You walk with a controller to an area, and then you stand up in that area, look around it, and enjoy it. But then equally, maybe it doesn't, because you don't have to do half the same amount of work and cabling to set up an Oculus, and you'll basically get the same feeling from yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Um, I'm tempted to say that what we're getting, I don't know if we actually saw gameplay. We didn't, no. So I'm... I'm tempted to say what we're getting is similar to maybe what we're getting with Batman later on. Um, that it isn't Fallout 4, uh, the game right, played okay. with VR. So you think it's some kind of um, mode of yeah, Fallout 4? Yeah, I think it's some sort of mode or some sort of experience. Again. That would be interesting, because they did make it seem very much yeah, like it was I, the I full thing. Um, I agree, but I just can't... I know like, what you mean. It's, it's, I can't really it's believe it. It's a big claim to stake. Because, I mean, that's... That's something that even even with the graphics that Sony seem to be pushing in, in their VR, um, it's still set PC. It's still this room, that room, this room. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe you designate your room to be the room that you're building for your for, the, for their lovely little um, uh, settlement building uh, mini yeah. projects. Yeah. So, yeah, but I can, I can legitimately... Well, yeah, maybe... Oh, wouldn't it? Maybe it's just settlement building. Yeah. Uh, so that was the main stuff on Bethesda. There wasn't a one more thing for Bethesda as as became a trend throughout the whole year, uh, throughout this whole year's E3. Um, in terms of our predictions, you predicted Elder Scrolls Six. Yeah. I uh, don't know I <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, uh, whereas I I predicted Prey Two. It's a lagging one. It looks totally different. So uh, we are one point each now. Yeah. Uh, and then we moved on to Microsoft. So, yeah. uh, starting day two, Xbox came out at 9.30. Um, we had had very little sleep at that <laughs> point. Uh, this was the first conference that you yes, turned up for. now I can talk. Exactly. Uh, now, you can uh, now you can remember that you're here. Indeed. Uh, so, Microsoft came out the gate with games. They, they had a really good pace yeah, I to think the conference. Um, this was the first one for me that I really enjoyed. Um because I liked Bethesda, but it it, didn't, it wasn't too great for me. Whereas I think Microsoft did a good job. Okay, personally. Um, yeah, I I agree. Now certainly it was a good presentation structure. Yeah, mm. they didn't really have anything much new to the table. Yeah, I would agree. Um, mm -hmm. There were a couple of games. I think I I think there might have been like Dead Rising Four. Yeah. If it hadn't leaked, that uh, that would have been a big reveal. State of Decay Two. If it hadn't have leaked, that yeah. would have been a big reveal. And that's I mean you've got to give huge, huge fucking huge props to Sony. Yeah. Every year, like they've and we'll get to Sony in in you know we'll get to Sony, <laughs> but um, the thing really that perhaps makes their conference so special is it doesn't leak. Yeah. Is is these big surprises yeah. are big surprises because there's no. Well, there is no inkling that something like that could the, happen. The advantage that Sony have in that sense is that um, uh, you can have a rumor that something's being done, and it still be an amazing reveal. Yeah, because yeah. Because they've had got history. No, I know that, but like last year, they had the Final Fantasy VII thing leak a few hours before, yeah. and everybody said, oh, "That's that's yeah, not believable." That's you go, but it can't happen. It's just not possible. No, and then it happens. And I like, agree, okay. but <laughs> in terms of this year. Like, Microsoft didn't just have Dead Rising 4 leak. They had it leak and screenshots oh, okay. and box art and GIFs and gameplay. And so when it came to, like, the actual presentation, you're like, yeah, okay, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's a major shame because that happened with a lot of their big reveals, like State of Decay 2. Mm. We'd seen that opening shot and trailer and knew what it was going for. Um, and, it, like, if it had been a pure going dark, what the fuck is going to happen yeah. conference, that would have been really awesome. Um and I don't know how you stop the stem of those leaks yeah. because somehow Sony managed to do it. Mm. Yeah, Maybe it's a part of a deliberate um, 
Microsoft strategy for all we know. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, so, as we explained, they did Dead Rising. We said on our Xbox show that Dead Rising was not exclusive. Uh, was a multi-platform game. Turns out there was a whole bunch of misinformation flying about the place. Yeah. Dead Rising 4 is an Xbox One exclusive, okay. right. which is great. Uh, because is it that, on um, uh, Play? Yes, it's Windows, so it it's Windows, Windows 10 okay. as well, but I don't think yeah. it's Play everywhere. Okay. I think it's on both platforms, but there's no cross between them. Okay. Um, yeah, there was one central underlying theme that ran throughout all of the Microsoft one. It yes. was this cross-play. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's their thing that they are pushing. And I think it's an interesting move by them. Uh-huh. Yeah, interesting, good. Um, Get everyone buying really. Windows 10. No? No, I mean, I guess it depends. I mean, it depends what they're doing on their side of things, because the problem is, is that if you bring out all your exclusives on Windows as well... Mm-hmm. Then people like myself who buy for uh, who buy consoles for exclusives don't have a reason to buy an Xbox One. Yeah, that's very true. But then, mm. I think Microsoft have been Microsoft have been for a while now trying to make a real push for PC. Mm. Um, and it seems silly because Steam is such a big ubiquitous place. Um, but if they are going to do it, if they are going to sneak back into the market and gain a reputation for it, this is the way they do it with decent Windows 10 exclusives yeah. that do have that USP of Xbox compatibility yeah. especially as xbox you know with scorpio next year comes out and becomes very pc centric yeah like that's basically going to be a pc living box and if there's some kind yeah, of maybe that's kind of where they're wanting to go i guess then yeah that could be fair enough i mean um the only problem is with that is it's not something that's worked for others but i mean they're not as big i mean steam have done like the whole idea of um the Steam Box and the yeah. Living Room games. But then Steam really fucked that up with the way they yeah. held it. Like, Yeah, true. Microsoft seemed to have a real game plan here. Yeah. And the question is how much of that game plan is going to change as Sony knock curveballs out of the park yeah. over and over again. Because they did. Um, and you have to wonder... Like It seems like the Xbox Scorpio, which was the big last thing, mm. uh, f- they say true 4K gaming, six teraflops of power, again, whatever the <laughs> fuck that means, mm. true VR support. So it seems like a very hardcore console. Yeah, no, I, I completely like it. Um, um, like, I would be tempted maybe to buy it if it's cheap. Yeah. I mean, like if, if well, admittedly, there's no point in me buying a 4K uh, console without but a 4K But that's the thing, screen, there's no point in yes. anyone <laughs> buying a 4K console. Like... 4K TV adoption, even by next year, is not going to be a point. Mm. At. But then, we say that, this was exactly the same yeah, with HD exactly. at the time of Xbox 360. So, it is an investment into the future, which now seems silly, because yeah. they're making it very clear that generations are not going to be the same anymore. Yeah. Like, if there's, a, if there's a new Xbox Project Scorpio four years after the last one, and I still haven't got a 4K TV yet, what's the point in buying the first one? Yeah, no, mm. definitely. It, it's going. The industry in the next few years is may change very rapidly and very drastically, and well, I mean, it, it all comes down to price point, doesn't it? Really? Well, I don't think it. I I think like uh, 1080p adoption came because of the price coming down. See, there's an interesting de- debate to be had there. It didn't just because of. It wasn't just because of price drop. It was a lot of it because of media and availability mm. like um you look at the adoption of, of 3d around avatar uh, yeah true and 3d was a huge boost around avatar and so was all the media around it you look at the amount of games everyone who dude 3D fucking TV. 3d is one of the best things you can have on a tv for gaming i swear to god you turn on 3d for gaming it's it's wonderful it's marvelous mm. um but you look at around that time 3d blu-ray became a thing 3d game support became a thing and now it's dropped off and that's it the same died. with <laughs> That's the same with DVD in 1080p, and it will be the same when Netflix come out and do Netflix 4K and Amazon 4K, yeah. and yeah, maybe this console will be a push for it, but maybe it will be hindered by it. Mm. It remains mm. to be seen. Uh, so my prediction was... I, I had two. One of them was a side. They were both dead shit wrong. Yeah. So uh, my, my prediction was Sunset Overdrive 2 closes at the conference. Uh, there is a very good reason that that didn't happen that we'll get to later. Yeah. My side prediction mm. was that Red Dead Redemption was uh, the sequel was on the stage and Red Dead was on backwards compatibility. Again, shit yeah. heart wrong there. Yeah. Uh, you didn't lay down a prediction for Microsoft. You wanted to just see what happened. Yeah. So we are still at 1-1. Okay. Uh, then we move into Ubisoft. 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 I be hard. Um, ugh, I might cut that out. Uh, <laughs> so Ubisoft again opened up with Aisha Tyler, who came on, did her thing. Yeah. Uh, we opened with Ghost Recon Wildlands. 
Yeah. Which are yeah. cool, I think, personally. Yeah. It, it was very kind of, yeah. Uh, we, we, we've done plenty of that on our, on our Ubisoft. That's true, yeah. You can have a, a look at the Ubisoft show if you want to uh, to have a look over specific games. Uh, it came out looking like a sort of Tom Clancy's Far Cry, which is yeah, fine with, by yeah. me. W- with do- heavy doses of Just Cause, I would say. Yeah, yeah, with, with some pretty, like, grounded parental guidance just cause yes (laughs) just cause but for sane people yeah um which is which is boring yeah um so then from there we went on to i can't remember what we went on to from there we had oh we had the division we had the dlc yeah we had them tease a splinter cell thing that never happened uh you can get a splinter cell skin if you want but yeah we thought that was was going to be something something bigger yeah uh, then from there we went on to the Assassin's Creed movie, yeah, which was a very weird section it was of the conference. Very weird to have it in in the conference. It was very weird to have it in the dead center of the conference as well. Like I could see it bookending the conference, but to yeah. have it like it was very much momentum, momentum, game, game, c- combo breaker. Like it was yeah. flat. It was interesting, especially as Ubisoft really seemed to be pushing movies. Yeah, so they but announced... I don't think E three is the place for it. Yeah. So they announced that they're doing a Watch Dogs movie. They did Watch Dogs. They reaffirmed it because oh, Sony yeah. Sony bought the rights to do a Watch Dogs movie years and years ago. Okay. Uh, actually, b- just a couple of weeks before Watch Dogs 1 came out. And then we heard nothing. So mm. this was them kind of coming back and being like, yeah, we've done no work on it, but we are making it's, a movie. It's kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah that was, there was so little to that. So I'm, not, I'm not really even sure why they brought it up. Yeah, it... <sighs> It maybe seemed to telegraph like a media strategy for Ubisoft. Yeah. Mm. But this is the kind of thing that maybe is better in investors' calls than on E three stages. Maybe they felt it was better that they had to bring it up at all at some point and the best place to do it was when they had already showcased Watch Dogs. Yeah, that's true. Um I was surprised there was no push for ticket pre orders. Yeah. For Am- because that's been a big thing. There is like pre order bonuses to see the movie. And uh, yeah, there's like special editions, and it's it's yeah. it's Yay. messy. Um, and I'm surprised that the Assassin's Creed thing didn't wrap and be uh, wrap up and be like, and you can buy your midnight screening tickets now. Instead, it was literally just here's the same trailer you've seen and a couple of yeah. minutes to talk about it. It was very yeah. odd. Hmm. I mean, for me personally, I hope that this translates to them reinvigorating the Assassin's Creed series. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Think. And again, we talked about what a reboot of Assassin's Creed might look like and where it could go right or wrong. Yeah. Um, so I guess a, a lot of this is a case of it remains to be seen. Yeah. Uh, you didn't do a prediction for Ubisoft. Again, wanted to take a back seat. Uh, I said Splinter Cell. I, I thought we were going to see a new Splinter Cell <laughs> game. <laughs> didn't happen. I'm not giving you points for the no, uh, yeah, skin. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I wouldn't give any points for the skin. Uh, so then we move on to Serial Killer of E3 console, of E3 conferences, goddamn PlayStation. Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, PlayStation so knocked it out of the park. If, if Bethesda came out the gate swinging, PlayStation came out the gate kicking in the nuts. Oh, yeah. Uh, they open with an orchestra, which at first I thought, oh, this is a bit shit. It this is a bit a pretentious. Bit and then yeah. they were like... And then they actually used it to really great effect. Yeah, because they mm. used it throughout the conference to do the music for the games that they were showing. Um, and I, I will say that this this year's PlayStation conference has felt to me very, very different. Yeah. Like, uh, even though in terms of the pacing and the announcements and the scale of it, it's it's actually fairly similar to last year's. Like, there's very much high points. There's very much... Yeah. There's not really a low point in it. There's, yeah, there's very much, like, good. hype moments. Mm-hmm. But the whole staging... Like, we're used to seeing that curve round thing yeah. that they do. And in the year that they launched VR, you thought they would have gone harder on that, but it was like in a nice theatre. It was there was beautiful staging yeah, curtains. It, was, it, it felt very different. It was a very mm. it was a very kind of uh, adult, I guess. You know. Yeah, and a lot of the games that they showed off had a very Last of Us mature feeling. So I yeah. wonder if this is perhaps their appro- this was maybe their sort of their theme, their own. Yeah, a lot of the big reveals, a lot of the sudden holy shit moments were from not. Last of Us games, like we'll get into those in a second, but the kind of first party mm. stuff that they revealed really felt like it fitted in. Yeah. And then the kind of stuff that they revealed that's third party or that's blow your fucking mind moments, um, wouldn't have fitted in anywhere or wouldn't not fit in anywhere. So I I think this was really nicely done. Yeah, and for me this conference was the best part about it was that it was the only one that had enough content to be 
trailer, 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 trailer. Yeah, they barely talk. Yeah. Um, whereas I think in every other conference we had bits where we were talking for ten minutes. Yeah. To somebody. Yeah. So dragged on a little bit. They yeah. came out the gate with God of War four, which is set in Norse times, set in Norse gods. It seems like Kratos is still the main character or some yeah, form of so. him. He has a son now. It looks a lot more open. Yeah. Um, and again, it looks more adult as well. Yeah, it looks a um, lot more deep. Yeah. It certainly looks a, mo- a lot more adult in that. The mature, like the. Uh, mature uh, in the mature sense yeah. rather than in the ga- buckets of buckets of blood sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um. I want to say as well that the the orchestra there are actually the the music for uh, God of War, so they're 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 doing the music. Yeah, they mm. they played all the music. No, no, they're um, actually, they're in the music. They're scored. They're, for they're the, the yeah. Oh, they score it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's a really nice touch. Yeah. Um. So they did they did God of War four. Then we had, uh, Days Gone, which is like the Last of Us on bikes crossed with yeah. Left 4 Dead, as far as we can see to an extent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we get more into that in a bit. We had Horizon Zero Dawn, which looked beautiful, which looked really, really good. Yes. Uh, that game was a real surprise last year, and it's nice to see it take that I momentum forward into this year. Last year, it gave us. Um, it was probably one of the best announcements. I well, not best announcements, best um, surprises. Yeah. yeah like, it. it did, that, you know, original IP is always good. Yeah. But yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Th- this this one really looked like it had. Uh, a diversity of mechanics that we hadn't necessarily yeah, seen Yeah, and if you watch the, the trailer for did. it, if you watch the trailer for it, it's probably the one of the best trailers there is. Yeah, it did. Yeah. How, it's how you do a trailer. It did a really, really good job last year, because I remember, I remember like, it, it almost got overshadowed by some of the big yeah. major announcements last year, which was kind of unfair, but it has managed to sort of stay strong and yeah. survive through that, um, and it looks really, really good. It took us by surprise last year in a, in a, in a good kind of, yeah. I want to play that way. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so then... We started the the big moments. There was then they did a whole tirade, a whole parade of PlayStation VR yeah. announcements. Uh, we had Star Wars, we had Resident Evil, uh, the demo of which looks pretty nasty, yeah. um, nasty in like a good horror yeah. kind of way. It's mm. it's incredibly obvious how much of an effect PT has had on this industry. Yeah. Yes, because if you look at games like Allison Road, you look now at Resident Evil. You look potentially at the kind of imagery that was in uh, the game that was revealed a bit later that we'll get into. Claustrophobic um, rooms with a with a small um, torch. Yeah, and 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 not just that, but claustrophobic rooms with a lot of backtracking and looking around and and yeah, yeah. it 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 feels like amnesia has gone full circle yeah mm-hmm. um and and pt is a very big part of why that's happened um so then we had batman there's a new batman arkham game that's on vr Ooh. uh <laughs> it sounds really cool apparently it's like a visual novel with detective stuff rather wish we saw more of actually what it was yeah it would have been nice to yeah. see gameplay especially as it's out in october yeah um, i gotta say it was a good reveal it was a really good reveal i'll absolutely give him it was a really good reveal um mark and hamill is joker again. mark hamill is joker he man rocksteady can't get rid of him yeah and that's great um <laughs> to, to have finished as well yeah <laughs> to have the lights go down and his voice come on again that was a total wait what the fuck moment yeah. uh, it was very good uh and then we had final fantasy 15. which was uh, final fantasy 15 which was great and they revealed an exclusive vr thing which is cool uh, mm-hmm. And then, then if we thought these were heavy hitters, yeah. the heavy hitters really came. So then the orchestra started playing the mu- music for Crash Bandicoot, yeah. and they came out and announced the Crash Bandicoot remaster, which is big. Yeah, like, that's mm-hmm. really big. Uh, it really interesting as well because it shows that there is some kind of connection back and forth between them and Activision on this IP. Yeah, uh, it doesn't seem like Activision is willing to get rid of it. And from what I've read online since, it seems like they're developing this remaster which is really interesting if you think that they could at any point once this is out entirely pull from Sony and make this their own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So be very interesting to see what the history of this and the future of this franchise leads to. I don't know because like while it's it's good to give it a push the problem that they're going to have to deal with eventually is that they have not managed to make a good crash game. Um yeah, since what? it's left Naughty Dog. Who, who I, yeah. But I think is something like the the thing that the thing that's going to make this different, I think, is that the roadmap is already there. Yeah. Like, Activision is not going to have to invent any of where no, this true. goes or what this feels like. They're just going to have to replicate it. Yeah. And Activision are an incredibly talented developer. Um, but they don't do much. Like, they don't actually publish and develop mm. much. And it is very interesting that, you know, Activision Blizzard are one of their 
big IPs may actually turn out to be yeah. an old Sony first party. It was a really big announcement, um, and it was something that I think nobody believed would happen. Yeah. I get the feeling this is, like... This is the kind of thing that I say, is that um, the, uh, their Sony has these leaks, these rumours that come out, but nobody believes them because it's yeah, like... Yeah, you're absolutely right. We're going to do that thing from like 20 years ago again, and you're like, no, 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 that's not possible. And I think like um, there's... <sighs> I really feel sorry for Phil Spencer oh, yeah. because he's trying so fucking yeah. hard. Like mm-hmm. he came out wearing the Battletoad shirt three years ago, yeah, and then he announced some Battletoad stuff, and people were like, "Oh, hey, that's really cool." Then they came out in a Crash Bandicoot shirt, and he must have been like dropped to the floor crying, thinking, "Oh, come on, yeah. <laughs> come on, guys." Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Crash Bandicoot is back, which is which is unbelievably cool, um, and it, clearly, Sony are listening. Yeah. Or at least if they're not listening, they are very fucking good at pretending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're from then, we then had... Was it Spider-Man next? I feel like Spider-Man was, was the next big hitter. More, yeah. but yeah. Spider-Man was, was, was the big... next big hitter. So then we had Insomniac come out and reveal that they've been making a Spider-Man game exclusively yeah. for PlayStation 4. Gameplay. Makes a lot of sense because Sony owned the IP to Spider-Man, but they've licensed it to Marvel for the movies. So it makes a lot of sense that this is where they take a lot of those first party earnings. Yeah. Uh, earnings is from games. Um, mm. If I trust anyone to make a Spider-Man game, it's Insomniac. Yeah, no, I mm-hmm. completely they agree. They really, I mean, if you haven't played Sunset Overdrive, they have an incredible sense of traversal. Um, their exploration gameplay and their, their tone, the way they nail that tone, I think, personally, I know you disagree. Um, is mm. second to none in terms of traversal, and a Spider-Man game is about traversal. Yeah. Ultimately, like we all play Spider-Man two to just fly around the city, and if they can nail that feeling, that's going to be something really special. Yeah, know? I wonder how they're gonna. I I haven't seen enough of it. I wonder how they're gonna deal with it exactly. If we're gonna have a a Spider-Man that can fly, or a Spider-Man that can uh, uh, use his webs on specific things. If you know what I mean, like yeah. Um, uh, There's the Spider-Man that can launch his uh, webs at anything webs into, the sky. into the sky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit. I mean, every every single Spider-Man has looked at Spider-Man Two and tried to emulate that for yeah. its thing. Well, so absolutely. I'm rather hoping that if there is to be another Spider-Man Two, its thing is not going to be the same thing that Spider-Man mm. games have been since then. Oh, that's interesting. So you want something kind of new from this? Well, I uh, Spider-Man Two had really good web slinging <laughs> yeah. uh, physics. Yeah, yeah but we really shouldn't be talking only about the the the, the web sling physics of Spider Man. No, yeah, like you're absolutely right. There yeah. there should be more Seven to a game down like the that. line. That's yeah, true. I don't know how long it's been. Um, uh, in fairness, been though, the the, the recent games yeah. had it pretty down in terms of tra- traversal, kind of. Mm. Yeah, but they had they had the. What I mean is they didn't do the um, ish. They didn't do the Spider Man can launch stuff into the sky. No, no, they didn't, and they mm. got that much better with the second and it kind one. Kind of worked. The the. I don't know what it is about that first one. I think it's... I think the thing that makes the web swinging in Spider-Man 2 so special is not the webs itself. It's the jumping. Yeah. I think it's the ability to be able to so fluidly jump from one to the next that it connects. Um, Mm -hmm. But I don't know. The latest games tried really hard, but they felt like they didn't just have enough months to nail it. Yeah. And this is something that Sony is not afraid to say, you know, the game's not coming out this month. Fucking wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I I really respect that because if any game is going to need an extra month here and there just to get that feeling right, it's something like this. Yeah, because we haven't had a really good... uh, We might disagree, but... um, A really good superhero release in, like, a a polished sense. Like, you say that um, Spider-Man could have done with a few extra months. Uh There's a few other games that we could talk about that could have done with a few extra months. That big one. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, that wasn't Sony. Yeah. 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 No, you're absolutely right. My PC can't play Arkham Knight. Where, 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 where? No, you're totally right. It's it it, it is an example that um, superhero games require a great deal of polish. Yeah. Especially not just if they're going to play right, but if they're going to feel like a, you know, yeah. Marvel Cinematic kind of incredibly polished, incredibly planned superhero release. Um, and Sony are the kind of company that will do that. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think so. So then their their final one big thing was a gameplay of Days Gone from yeah, earlier. Yeah, which which like. if the if the conference up to this point hadn't been fucking stellar, yeah. that would have been a real drop off to that conference. Yeah. Um, I agree. And I do wonder whether there was something else there at some point. 
Yeah. I wonder whether the PS4 Neo was there at some point, and there is something that stopped it being there. Yeah, mm. I mean, the, we have to look at it. The, the conference, as far as we were aware, was 15 minutes shorter than it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, they are usually 90 minutes, and this one was 75. Yeah, um, and I think... Yeah, 75. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe there was something missing from it. Yeah, um, it, it definitely felt that way. Um, and this was something that became fairly standard over all the conferences. Is there was no one last thing reveal there was no sudden there was no thing to leave you salivating i wonder whether sony are doing um what they did before where they're trying to delay they're trying to see what the the rest of the market's going to do before they reveal what they're going to do yeah it's very Sony's potentially thing because i mean yeah. like you know they they if, if, if i reckon if xbox came out and we're like here's the scorpio then we would have seen the playstation neo really yeah i reckon so i reckon that's what they were prepared to do but then when they heard that it was the Xbox One Slim is what's really announced. Like, Scorpio, we don't really know too much about. Because I think, actually, Xbox did a really good job of coming out there and going, OK, yeah. poof, there's the gauntlet. Not, yeah, but they they revealed the Slim. But, I mean, in terms of the Scorpio, they, the details aren't there. And I think Sony are going to wait until the details are there before they bring out yeah. their details. But I do think it's that speculation at the beginning, like... I mean, I've got to be honest. Sony are the people that would do that. They did. They, they did change it's their yeah, winning yeah, no, you're strategy. Right. I think of PS4 right. after the conference. You're absolutely right in terms of the actual Xbox took the flag. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right in terms of the realistic. This is what it is. But I think mm. as a, as an opening gambit, I think Xbox definitely won that shot because yeah. PlayStation confirmed it before E3 and said it's not going to be here. Whereas True. Xbox made it their big one last thing, for better or worse. Yeah, I think xbox won that shot but it is it's not about this opening gambit at the end of the day it's about what it comes down to in the yeah. week of its release and sony are known to be able to sort of take things down to the wire and tweak them and play with them yeah so yeah this will be an interesting fight to see um i think some of the things that's interesting about sony is the stuff that wasn't there yeah so we mentioned true. on the show that we recorded last night uh gran turismo was not there which is supposed to be coming out this year i believe or supposed to be in the launch window of psvr so i really expected to see that uh, it's just occurred to me there was no No Man's Sky, yeah, which is, is crazy interesting, interesting because that game's out in like a month and a half. Well, I think maybe it's got to the point where um, there's enough to see that it doesn't need to be at E3. I mean, Uncharted's in a similar way. They didn't show that, but I think that's because it's... Uh, well, that incredibly bad practice. I mean, it's out now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it is, but you would have thought... I mean, they made such a big thing about it selling well. You would have thought maybe they come out and go... like. It yes, would have it would have broken no way. the way the console the conference ran like from trailer to trailer True. to trailer. But just to like put Bruce Straley from Naughty Dog on the stage and go, "Hey, we sold five million copies. We're doing single player DLC. Here's Spider Man or whatever." Yeah, it, true. It is the kind of recognition that Uncharted needs. Yeah, I agree. Um, um, but yeah, I think you 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 raise a good point in that. So I really think it's interesting that No Man's Sky wasn't there, especially considering PSVR is a huge rumor for that game. Yeah, I, I'm wondering whether whether the, whether some of the uh, the steam the uh, the fuel is running out on that f- hype. Train. Yeah, it will be a Confused very downloads. first interesting week yeah. to see what that game is, how it plays like, yeah, it, how much of it is a response to what I we've think, seen. Yeah, I think the hype on that game is kind of not running out, but it's it's not being it's changed a lot. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's become something that people have really wanted. Or that it's, oh no, it, it was something that people really wanted. It's kind of changed a lot here and there. Mm-hmm. We don't quite know what we're getting still, which is a bit of a worry. Yeah, I, I think it is another Death by a Thousand Cuts situation yeah. in which the game has been shown... Like, the first time that game was shown, it was mind-boggling. Yeah. And if they'd been able to say, yeah, we get it's mind-boggling, it's out in six months, it would have been absurd. It would, yeah. it would probably never live up to that hype, but it would have maintained it. Whereas the first time it was mind-boggling, and the second time it was like, oh, this again. And then the third time it was like, oh, this, this again. And yeah. uh, maybe if they had shown it one more time, it would have been this again. But you really, you have to hope that the game has something up its sleeve that it can go, surprise. Yeah, because... And, and it not being there and not showing it kind of does make me worry yeah. that it doesn't. The, their main problem at the moment is that you know we talked before about games that uh, don't give you a direction. I think that's the main problem we have at the moment is that many people don't know what No Man's No Man's Sky is and whether we're going to be here's a universe you can play in, but you're uh, completely alone forever. Um, and I mean the comparison that's thrown about and and fairly aptly so is Spore. Yeah. Where there was like the whole design any monster ever yeah, kind yeah. of approach and to Spore it. Spore got massively downgraded. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And and Spore as well had that hype. It had but that hype fizzled out yeah. as well. 
I really hope that No Man's Sky is not this generation's sport. I agree. But they're not doing much to show us it's not. Yeah. Which maybe they need to do after this many delays and this many problems. Yeah, yeah. completely agree. Um, so that was interesting. Your prediction for Sony... Oh, shit. We... Oh, holy shit. We didn't talk about uh, Hideo Kojima. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. So uh, they did a massive reveal. One of the biggest reveals of the whole thing was Hideo Kojima is alive and can walk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is impressive considering the year he's had. Although not, as it were... In time to yeah. the magical <laughs> yeah. so bridge this, of light so this, that's yeah. being this, created for him. This bridge forms under him, and he's uh, a little bit in front of it. As he like takes a step, the it lights yeah. up beneath him, and it's supposed to be really impressive. Except he walks a little too fast and just walks <laughs> off into the shadows. It's great. Well, um, Sony had to have its necessary dose of e uh, of e three. Uh, yeah, it had to have its pomp and circumstance. And if anyone deserves it, Hideo Kojima is kind of oh, the yeah. man to get it. See, while there was good high points in this, and uh, I think this is something that people are going to really take away as Hideo being being there you yeah. know yeah absolutely I think that's a big takeaway from the entire conference is that like this is happening so the game that we saw was called death stranded stranding stranding yeah. which is i still think that's a really bad title um, it. but it had a lot of uh it had a lot of um oil it had a lot of oil it had a lot of whale yeah, it imagery. Was dead, crabs. It was very... dead crabs it had a lot of like um bp it looked like the bp oil spill if psycho mantis <laughs> had orchestrated it yeah um so the most we got that probably Plot is spoilers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, what what's going on in that trailer is no anyone's guess. But yeah, I uh, think the only thing that maybe we could take away is the 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 they in that thing they had five floating figures. Yeah, that's the only thing I think is going to actually yeah. be relevant. Uh, that and Norman Reedus. Reedus. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing I think we could take away. Actually, maybe being like canon. So what, a Hideo Kojima is. set of imagery that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we questioned what it was at the time and and where it fits in with what he's doing. Um, and I think actually the more I've thought about the conclusion we came to, the more I really do believe it. Uh, I do wonder whether Hideo Kojima is working on two games. Yeah, and this is a Silent Hills thing. Yeah, I uh, I I'm on that kind of side. I think. Um, the imagery, like Silent Hill, is big for its imagery, and I think while this isn't going to be exactly Silent Hill, it's going to be in that vein. Yeah, I it's agree. Certainly not going to be PT. No, but we were never getting PT, honestly. <laughs> and and it seems like Resident Evil's taking up that mantle, yeah. which is good because that series needed that. Yeah, I agree. Um, so Hideo is doing this uh this mech game. With his main character, Lu, Lu Ludens. Yeah, he confirmed. It, there's no way it fits in. There's like. I don't imagine in any world it, it could work. It didn't look right. It didn't look like an action game, and it didn't it didn't look like something that could turn into a Metal Gear Solid clone. Um, I wonder whether a lot of the imagery and a lot of the meta story is going to be about what happened with Konami. Yeah. It's going mm. to be a anti corporation, anti <laughs> like anti control. We've got all the dead whales. I well, mean, yeah, like it, it did seem like a sort of natural world. Konami, versus... where artists wash up to die. <laughs> <laughs> They beach themselves <laughs> on the death stranding of Konami. The the last boss is a pachinko machine. <laughs> <laughs> those those kind of um like heavy uh themes of anti government ish and anti capitalism ish have been big things in the old games. Yeah. And it's yeah. a big thing in Hideo's thing, so it wouldn't surprise me if there was some sort of ish re like uh, reference to Konami in some like Look at this evil corporation kind of way. Yeah, is is it Konami or is it just straight up Hideo Kojima being what Hideo Kojima has always been? It's called yeah. The, it, in the game, it's called Panami. Uh, yeah, nobody will notice. in the Panami. Um, the thing, the thing that I think was really interesting about this is that that trailer specifically is that it deviated quite heavily from what he yeah. usually does. Where Hideo Kojima is quite obsessed with Western culture and American culture, quite specifically, like David Bowie, American movies, eighties action, that kind of like I imagine that. I imagine that Kung Fury is his like wet dream, mm. um, <laughs> to put it bluntly, and and it deviated quite strongly from that because it felt different. I don't yeah. know how to describe it. I it I would almost say it felt New? like it reminded me a lot of like Icelandic horror mm. and Norwegian horror and that kind of natural world horror that they do really well. The sun is shining horror. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's been traveling around the world a lot. <clears throat> to see various devs look at engines look at yeah. meet this kind of like he's yeah. been every developer that there is basically and i really like the idea of a hideo kojima who's gone who's been 
confined to Konami going out, seeing yeah. the world, and bringing <laughs> yeah, back these ideas of, oh, holy shit, there's a whole bunch of new stuff I can do. Because the, yeah. one thing, the thing that'd be the worst about this is if it comes out and it turns out that actually Hideo under the, con- the constraints of Konami is what makes him work. Mm. Yeah. And so if he comes out as a totally refreshed game dev, as somebody who has this new passion, this new love for what they're making, and it comes out in the game, that's going to be one of the most powerful statements of this guy as an auteur that we've ever seen. Yeah, and I think mm. for me, from the trailer, it seems like we're getting something completely, completely new, which is something I'm kind of very interested in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because there, there has been, in terms of IPs, there's not been much in a, a massively new way, mm-hmm. in at least in the AAA space, that have kind of blown me away recently. Oh, I know what you mean. Um, there's been lots of like, here's an FPS, here's a, you know, you've kind of seen the gameplay before, here's a call of duty titanfall yeah no absolutely Um, it's like third person action or first person shooter and and i think ironically and quite interestingly the last game that we saw of that we we thought oh shit this is going to change things was pt yeah Mm. no i agree um so yeah sony knocked it out of the park absolutely not the the um the statement that i heard that i read that i think is absolutely a fair comparison is microsoft knocked it out of the park sony bulldozed the stadium yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it's good so uh, if you had to close up on E3, personally, I think this year's E3 was um a little underwhelming. I thought it wasn't as good yeah. as last year. I think last year is one of the ones, the best ones we had in a while. Yeah, but I, I do think that it was very good. Uh, Sony especially really pulled it back. Um, and even if it wasn't for Sony, it was a fairly good. It, there was a really good standard other than EA. Yeah, no, I, I I'm fair with that. I agree with that. So um, I I would give it a. I I would give it a successful out of (laughs) ten. That would be my review for it. Okay. What do you gentlemen think? Um. See, I'm I'm willing to give Sony an excellent. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. No. No. But then, if you if you keep it uh, keep Sony, uh, if you put the rest with it, it was uh, good. Okay. Good out. A good out of ten. Good out of ten. I I'd say uh, just you, you all. Uh, we've talked about this before. What I particularly liked about this 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 uh, E3 is the less of the pressure on hype and on big august trailers that are not necessarily that representative. Although we don't know at this point. I yeah. So it I, did look like an I honest would, E3, though. Yeah. I would give it an honest, an out honest of 10. out of ten. <laughs> I really like that. I think that's I mean, a very good wrap up. We even kind of think ubisoft uh honest which is uh, I mean, something from ubisoft if if eagle flight isn't honest yeah woof, it could yeah. turn around woof. next e3 um that everything that we've just seen was a horrible lie you know yeah uh all of that the the playstation the reason we didn't see any vr on 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 screen with playstation was because they haven't got any kind of source yeah. the out, xbox scorpio is actually eight teraflops oh, yeah wow. and filled with scorpions <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think actually Honest out of 10 is a really good wrap up for me. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. um, so, that, ladies and gentlemen, was our review of E3 2016. Thank you very much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you like this, please consider liking the page, subscribing to it so you can catch us when we release new podcasts and new content as frequently as we can. Please come and have a look at our Facebook page, Games Upcast, and our Twitter page, exactly the same. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to disappear for a little bit again, just like we did uh, before E3. Still, things are a little bit up in the air. We're all still all over the place. Um, so we're going to have to sort of cement that down before we come back properly uh, and give Games Upcast the uh, the tr- the um, parade of things it deserves. Uh, but thank you very much for sticking with us. If you did, we really appreciate it. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Happy E3. I think it was a good one. Yeah. So thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for listening. Much. Until next year and until next time, E3's up.